The first ever made vaccines, in theory, were safe, but there were some issues with the testing process. For example, the Sabin vaccine was one of the very first vaccines. This was a killed vaccine. They grew up the virus and then they killed it. The testing for this was not very secure, as when they were testing it on various children, they don't make sure that all of the batches were killed off properly. So instead of giving a vaccine that is supposed to fight against the polio disease, it gave them the polio disease. So now the new methods of testing include killing the batch, then making sure it's dead, then later making sure it's dead again. There's nothing wrong with these old vaccines. The only thing that changed from them from the past was that we have developed better versions of these vaccines. Today, these vaccines are now cheaper, more effective, more efficient, safer, easier to produce, easier to transport because they are less needed to be cold, which allows them to be transported overseas in countries where refrigerators A vaccination is the generation of a beneficial immune response that induces protection from subsequent infection. We have already eradicated many awful diseases in the past and will hopefully continue to do so in the future. Present vaccines are made in several ways, however, each vaccine that is being produced has the same goal to achieve, weaken the virus and or the bacteria in a way that allows the recipient to develop an immune response without it developing any symptoms of infection. A vaccine is made using the same components that would be found in the natural virus or bacteria so that your immune system will be able to develop an immunological memory. Immunological memory is a very quick immune response that usually lasts forever. So if in the future you are ever faced fighting the same infection, you will have antibodies made, therefore preventing it. B cells and T cells are responsible for a vaccine's protective effects. Poliomyelitis is a highly contagious viral infection that can lead to paralysis, breathing problems, or even death. This was a major medical breakthrough, and there is so much more to discover. Hopefully in the future, we will be able to prevent more infectious diseases that could possibly kill us today. Vaccines. I had one just the other day. But what does the future hold for vaccines? If we want to find this out, we are going to have to split time up into three different categories. 1 to 20 years away, 20 to 50 years away, and 50 plus years away. In 1 to 20 years, we'll hopefully see a vaccine for HIV. This vaccine I'm talking about is called SAV001 and it started its clinical trials in March 2012. 20 to 50 years. We'll probably see a vaccine for TB and typhoid. This, well, this is where we go into more and more theory. We don't know. No one knows. But opinions from academics we have interviewed, such as Dr. Andy Coley of the Institute of Molecular Science at La Trobe, and Dr. Ian Sharrick, who works at the Alpham Clinic, believe that we will never fully get rid of diseases. Cancer, you, you didn't see that like 20 years ago. Cancer wasn't this big thing 20 years ago because people weren't living as long. The longer you live, the more chance you have to get cancer. And that's going to be the same with other diseases. If we cure cancer, then another disease is going to appear. And if we cure that, another one's going to appear as we live longer and longer. So we'll never cure that, but we'll never cure diseases. But we can only hope that we'll cure some of the more deadly ones. And we can, we do have vaccines against some cancers like the vaccine against cervical cancer, the, which is 70% effective at preventing cervical cancer, the HPV vaccine. And yeah, so we have hope, but there's no definite answer. If you would like to learn more and more questions about personalized vaccines, shark antibodies, and why vaccines need to be changed, Go check out our website.